Hello and um, good evening. Uh, I can see that I'm all by myself today and I hope you'll be able to watch this recording because I'm already recording and um, if anyone does come, they'll find me on the way. Uh, so today, as you all requested, um, we're going to be discussing uh, family law. Uh, I can see somebody just joined. I hope you can hear me. Let's see again who it is. Okay, uh, all right, welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, as promised, uh, today we are discussing um, family law. So if you if you haven't uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, it's there on the on the WhatsApp. Uh, I will also post it uh, after this session. Please subscribe so that you can get the updates as well as uh, the new videos that I post. So um, this is just the outcome that will be expected of you after this session. Um, at the end of this session, you must be able to know what family law is. You will be able to explain the impact of the constitution um, on family law in South Africa, pre-constitutional era and post-constitutional era. And then you will be able to explain what the sources of family law are, identify the branches of law and to which uh, family law falls. And you will be able to comprehend how case law influenced the development of family law in South Africa. Uh, so let's start. Uh, before we start, uh, who, uh, I just want to, to introduce yourself. I can see that there's someone, but because I'm sharing a screen, it's... Hey, I don't know how to pro pronounce your name. But see, uh, you, you can unmute. And uh, since it's just me and you, so we can have a conversation. You can unmute and introduce yourself, sir. Yes, that's a very long name. My name is Basima Nebotle Basima Nebotle, uh, that's like all the men. <laughs> all the boys, yes. Oh, all the boys. Okay, is it Tswana? Yes, it's the Tswana. I'm, uh, oh, I'm okay. studying LLB with the uh, studio. Oh, okay, cool. Good to meet you. Um, okay, so cool. So now today it looks like it's just me and you. So we're going to have an exciting conversation on family law. Have you already started? I, I haven't. I subscribed to your channel and I saw that uh, you'll be lecturing. I haven't started it. Is it? So I believe I'll learn something. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. I hope. Um, I hope you will be able to 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 learn something. So okay. So let's start. Um, what do you think family law is according to your your knowledge? No textbook definition. Just what you think it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, so family law is concerned with the law or the rules relating to families in South Africa. So the definition is, you know, it's on the name itself. You know, it says family law. So we know that it's concerned with the law or rules relating to families in South Africa and the proper definition that I think you will also find on the textbook is that uh, family law regulates the origin, contents, and dissolution of all legal relationships between spouses, life partners, domestic partnerships, uh, parents, and children. So as uh, family law deals with uh, family matters, uh, in short, we can say 
it deals with family matters as long as it's marriage, engagement, uh, parents, children, you know that is um that is family law. So uh we know that um in South Africa we have we have public law and then we have private law. So uh, I know you said that you 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 haven't started yet, but have you done um uh introduction to law? So um, in order to determine where uh, family law fits uh, in our legal system, first of all, we need to know uh, if it falls under private law or public law. So uh, first of all, uh, we need to know what private law is. Uh, private law is the law that deals with the relationships between individuals. Um, and it includes amongst many other areas of law, such as law of delict, which um, you probably do uh, in future, uh, if you're studying LLB or BA law, uh, law of contract, uh, you still wanna do that one, uh, law of property, as well as law of persons. So I also have uh, the law of persons modules uh, that I have done last year, that I uploaded on the on the YouTube channel, and I will still uh do more uh more recordings of law of persons, as well as um family law. So in short, private law deals with law of delict, law of contract, law of property, law of persons, and family law. That is private law. So it it deals with uh private matters like um. Between, uh, between private individuals and not the state. So that is private law. And then um, we say we have private law and then we have public law. And then under the public law scope, um, we have things like human rights, legal interpretation, constitutional law, administrative law, and international law. And public law focuses on um, the areas of law that traditionally fall within the uh, within the public domain, uh, which is the one that I just mentioned, as well as uh, criminal law. So it is the one that uh, deals with crime uh, between individuals and the state. So we know that in uh, when it comes to public law, it is the state. Uh, that prosecutes. So it's between the state and the public. So when you commit crimes against the state, uh, when you steal, um, when you murder, it's the state that prosecutes. And uh, all those areas of law, they fall under public law. Uh, but without wasting uh, too much time on uh, public law, because today we're dealing with private law, which is family law. So we're going to continue. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's talk about the, the impact of the constitution. Um, the impact of the constitution uh, in, uh, yeah. in family matters in Bank. <laughs> so, um, as I always say that you need to have a copy of your constitution always. It's, uh, it's very important that you have the copy of your constitution with you. You will see that the impact of the constitution um, on our law is uh, with everything that we do. So you will see the values, uh, they are stated on the, on section one of the constitution, these things are the things that uh, you need to know. Either you're yeah. doing uh, family law, uh, law of persons, property law, you have to start um, with the constitution. And we know that the constitution is the supreme law of the land. Any law that is um, inconsistent or conduct uh, that is inconsistent with the law it's deemed to be invalid. So the constitution is our number one source that we always go to if we want to find out uh, the validity of the law. So 
If you want to know what is on section one, you need to have the comp copy of your constitution. Uh, it talks about human dignity, um, equality, and human rights. So I will just do section 1A, which is says, the Republic of South Africa is one sovereign democratic state founded on the following values, human dignity, the achievement of equality, and the advancement of human rights and freedom, non-racialism and non-sexism. Uh, it goes on and on and on until, um, until uh, subsection D. And then uh, section two is the supremacy clause, um, the one that talks about the supremacy of the constitution, law conduct inconsistent with it is invalid. And all these sections, um, they link to, uh, to family law. You will also see uh, section nine, uh, which we call uh, the equality clause. You can uh, read that by yourself. Um, section 10 as well uh, talks about human dignity. Please read that one by yourself. Section 15 and uh, most importantly, uh, section 28, which talks about uh, ch children's rights. So I selected um, uh, these uh, because they are very, very relevant. Um, to, to family law. And uh, as you progress, you will see the cases, uh, you will see uh, this legislation uh, that, that we just mentioned that will, uh, it will help you as you, as you progress uh, and you will get a better understanding. So when it, it comes to these clauses um, that I just mentioned, you don't need to memorize them, but you just need to know them, especially the, the relevant sections. Like you need to know that on section nine, uh, you find um, equality. Section 10, it's about human dignity. Section 15, freedom of religion, belief and opinion. And section 28 is very, very important when it comes to family law because it deals with um, children's rights. So um, <clears throat> let's talk about the, the evolution of um, the family concept. So uh, we're going to touch on uh, the unions that are recognized in, um, in family law. So when we're talking about the unions, we're obviously talking about the uh, marriages. Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, uh, may I ask that you mute yourself, please? Okay, um, thank you. So, um, when we're talking about the unions that are recognized in law, we are talking about uh, the marriages. So we have uh, different types of unions in South Africa. Uh, we have marriages. Uh, I think that is the most common one um, in the modern day South Africa. And that is in terms of the Marriages Act. There is an entire chapter on the textbook, uh, the chapter that deals with marriages, the type of marriages um, in terms of the marriage act or the type of the matrimonial property regimes that one can enter it into. Those are the regimes that talk about in community of property, out of community of property, uh, in community of property with the accrual system. But we're not going to dwell there today uh, because this is more like an introduction, just to give you an idea of um, what you're going to be uh, focusing on going forward. So you know that um, we're going to talk about engagement, uh, we're going to talk about marriage, but now we're talking about the unions that are legally recognized in South Africa. So the first one is the marriages, that is in terms of the Marriage Act, 
And I will uh, recommend that you get yourself a copy of the Marriage Act and try to familiarize with the most important uh, clauses on the, on the Marriage Act. And then um, we have also a civil union, uh, which is in terms of the Civil Unions Act. So uh, the civil union is um, almost the same as the marriage, uh, the marriage act, but it is not 100% the same. The only uh, difference, I mean, everybody in South Africa is allowed to get married using the, uh, the civil union, uh, but the marriage act is limited. The marriage act, uh, the marriages under the marriage act is only limited to uh, men and women only. And if you're getting married in terms of the marriage act, it's between one man and one woman. It does not recognize uh, polygamy, Istanbul. It does not recognize that uh, you need to get married to one person uh, and one person only. Uh, and then in terms of the Civil Union Act, uh, it's the same, uh, it's the same case, only get married to one person. However, our civil union um, in, in South Africa, it does allow um, same-sex marriages, um, which is, uh, I think it's a very important union that we're going to, uh, there is a case that we're going to uh, also discuss uh, briefly uh, today, that uh, which is the one that actually um, gave birth uh, to the Civil, Un Civil Unions Act in South Africa. And then we also have the customary marriages, uh, which falls under the recognition of Customary Marriages Act. So the customary marriage um, is also very uh, important uh, in our South African legal system because um, Obviously, it is legally recognized under the recognition of Customary Marriages Act. Uh, we will know uh, that one very well with uh, regards to uh, the, the tradition and the culture, you know, and the passion that is poured into our customary marriages, which is usually starts from Lobola, uh, and then we have celebrations, and then we have people coming together. Um, you also know that after uh, one gets married uh, under the recognition of customary marriages act, usually there is no document uh, that is given to them, but they can uh, take that document, uh, take it to the Department of Home Affairs to have uh, that marriage uh, registered or recognized. But that is not a prerequisite. That is for people that want a document. You can still have your customary marriage, which uh, obviously we call traditional weddings. Uh, you can still have that kind of, 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 of wedding ceremony and not have it registered and it's still valid because whatever that they will need, uh, just in case um, something happens in the future or maybe you're getting divorced and then you are worried uh, my marriage is not, is, not, is not registered at the Department of Home Affairs am I married or not? Are there certain requirements that need to be to be met so as the um so that your 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 marriage will be fully uh recognized? And one of the requirements is that they should be uh witnesses. So obviously you would have invited people, they will come, they celebrate, sometimes they take pictures, sometimes not, uh, but the photos are necessarily not the requirement. Uh, we will also deal um, with the requirements of all the um, recognized unions when we deal with them one by one. So all the uh, recognized unions in South Africa, there is certain requirements that need to be met. So we will uh, deal with those um, one by one when we get to that. Uh, we also have religious marriages. So we, uh, we usually have a notion of 
of uh, Christianity that um, the religious marriages we, we we will be referring to Christianity, which is uh, somehow not true because there is a lot of uh, religions uh, that are recognized in South Africa. However, uh, Christianity is more dominant. That's why we feel as though uh, all our religious marriages um, are under the uh, the Christianity domain. So we're not going to focus much on that, uh, but there is uh, certain requirements as well with the religious marriages, uh, which we will deal with um, in future. And then we also have uh, life partnerships and uh, domestic partnerships. Hi, Patrick. Um, uh, we also have uh, domestic uh, domestic partnerships as well. So um, the the recognized um, unions in South Africa, as a recap, uh, we have marriages in terms of um, the Marriages Act. We have civil unions in terms of Civil Union Act. We have customary marriages in terms of the recognition of customary marriages act. We have religious marriages. Uh, we have life partnerships or domestic partnerships. And uh, like I said, we will have uh, full sessions on each and one of these uh, recognized um, uh, unions uh, in South Africa. So uh, before I continue, uh, just a recap. I know that um, uh, Patrick uh, came late and um, the other, I actually didn't, I didn't see the other person that came in uh, their name, uh, but I know you came in late as well. So here is what I spoke about so far. Uh, we spoke about the definition of family law um, we spoke about private law and public law and uh, where family law fits uh, in our legal system. Um, and then uh, we spoke about the impact of the constitution um, in family law. And then uh, we spoke <clears throat> about the, the evolution of the family law concept where we touched on the uh, unions that are recognized in law in South Africa, which is marriages, civil unions, customer marriages, religious marriages, life partnerships, and domestic partnerships. Is there anything that I need uh, to explain further before I move on to the next section? Uh, is there anything that you guys would like me to explain or do you have any questions okay uh, I'll take that as a no uh, I'm not too sure who has their mic on uh, please may I ask that you you mute yourself uh, hi, Zoom user. Uh, okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, that's why I didn't get your name because it says here you are Zoom user. Okay. Um, so we will call you Zoom user for for tonight. Okay. Uh, I don't know who whose mic is on. I don't know if it's you, Patrick. Uh, may I ask that you mute yourself? <clears throat> Yes, it's you, Patrick. Uh, okay. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to mute you. Okay, I, I, I have muted you. I, are you okay? Do you understand? Do you have any questions? Should I move on? No, I don't have any question, Mr. T. You can just okay. move on. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you, okay. Mr. T. No problem, sir. So um, let's talk about the sources of... Um, of family law in South Africa. So the sources of family law, when we're talking about the sources, we're talking about 
uh it's like a place i mean like a place where you find um where you find law that is related um to to family law or that will help you to solve the problem that you are facing at that particular moment and um from the start of the session i know that you guys were not here i mentioned uh, the constitution right and i did uh go through uh, the sections on the constitution that are relevant to the uh that are uh, that have an impact on um on family law in south africa um i mentioned section 1 and section 2 uh section 9 uh, section 10, uh, section 15, you know, you can always go back and, um, and, and read those sections. But uh, I want to emphasize on uh, section two, which is um, the supremacy clause, um, which says that the constitution um, of the Republic, um, the constitution is the supreme law of the Republic the law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid and the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled, right? So what that tells you is that in South Africa, there is no law that is above the constitution. So whatever it is that might think that it's above the constitution is invalid. So the importance of the constitution is that on the hierarchy, the constitution comes first. So whatever decisions that are made in court, they have to be in line with the constitution. They have to be uh, uh, aligned to the constitution and they must not violate anything on the constitution. Otherwise, uh, those decisions would be invalid. Let's say, uh, for example, we had a death penalty in South Africa and then um, because death penalty was uh, not in line with our constitution, it was in conflict with the right to life, and then uh, therefore the penalty was uh, was repealed. So anything that is inconsistent with the constitution, it is therefore invalid. So the reason why um, I'm mentioning the constitution is that the constitution will be your number one source of law. So whatever problem that you might be facing, in future when it comes to family law, when it comes to property law, but for the purposes of this program, we're going to, to be talking about family law. So whatever problems that you might face, your number one source will be the constitution. What does the constitution say? What does the law say? That's where you go first to find your answers, right? As long as it is in line with the constitution, then you continue. So from the hierarchy, you will see that we have the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, number one, as it is the most important source and it is the supreme law of the country. I cannot emphasize that any more or any further because as long as it's uh, not in line with the constitution, then it's invalid, right? And then, um, we, we have uh, the second source of law that we're going to talk about is statutory law. Um, can anyone tell me what statutory law is? Just a try, no right or wrong answer, just, uh, just a try. Statutory law. Okay, so uh, statutory law is the legislation. So uh, it also falls under the legislation arm of government. Um, so for example, uh, I have an exam perfect example here, the Marriage Act of 1961, uh, the Children's Act, all those um, legislation that you see, it comes with an act at the end, act attached to it. That is legislation. That is what we call statutory law. So we have the constitution, as the number one source. And then we have uh, the legislation as our second source. So it means that when you try to find your answers in the constitution, you say that, okay, this problem, it aligns with the constitution, then fine. Then now I go 
to the legislation, what does the law say? Because the legislation is the law as well. What does the law say? Then you will um, have a look if it's a matter within the marriage, uh, marriage, maybe you're dealing with a divorce or something, then you check the Marriage Act of 1961 to find out what does the Marriage Act say about this, right? You will find your answers there. So under the statutory law, we have case law. So when we're talking about case law, we talk about uh, the court judgment. We talk about the, the previous cases um, that were made in the past that are relevant to the particular problem that you are facing. So we call that judicial, uh, judicial pres uh, president, right? So we always refer back to other cases. So if you have a case, that is similar to the case that happened in 2006 or 2005, then you go and look at the facts. If the facts are similar, then you will know that you might probably get the same judgment because uh, in law we say um, similar cases are treated alike. Of course, they are treated in their own merits, but you must always go back to previous cases in order to find your answers. So you don't just go to any case, you look at the similar cases. So there is um, cases that you will find that uh, changes uh, the, the law in South Africa in its entirety. So, uh, so we have constitution, we have legislation, and then we have case law. So there is uh, a very important case that we're going to, to be talking about uh, that is um, one of the most important cases uh, in family law right now. And then we have uh, common law as well. So common law is, um, it, 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 it comes from the, from the Roman Dutch law um, if you know about uh, the history of, um, of the South African law, then you will know where common law comes from. Uh, when uh, Van Riebeck arrived in the Cape uh, many years ago, and then um, they came with, uh, with their own laws. At that time, it was called the law of the sheep and so on, but we're not going to uh, get into that. So that is common law. So common law deals with uh, Roman Dutch law uh, and English law as well. And then um, it is not, it is usually not, not written down. So in South Africa, we have an uncodified legal system. So what that means is that our laws are not written down. There is no place that you, you, you're going to go except for the constitution, obviously. Uh, to say, okay, this is the law, and say, oh, uh, you made at somebody. Let's go to the book and 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 find out what crime you committed. You know, we don't have that. Unlike uh, other countries, I think, um, uh, if my memory serves me right, the United Kingdom or the United States. I'm not sure. You can double check that. Uh, the United States, I am sure, they have uh, something called the Ten Commandments, where when somebody uh, committed a crime, they'll go to that book and then they will find the law that is uh, written down. In South Africa, we don't have that. We depend on the constitution, we depend on the legislation, we depend on previous judgments, we depend on common law. And then uh, we have customary law. Customary law, it is usually uh, the African customs, um, how things were done, you know, how things were done in the past uh, when it comes to um, people that lives, um, uh, let's say, for example, in the villages, let's say you are from Guazulu Natal, you're from the Eastern Cape, there's a certain way that things were done and uh, it is recognized uh, in, um, in the South African legal system uh, although we do have uh, the official customary law, 
which is uh, qualified somehow. And usually there's a lot of questions about the official customary law because the courts sometimes they feel like it's outdated and most of the official customary law, sometimes the courts try to uh, make it, you know, a, a little bit difficult because sometimes it's, it's seen as um, uh, unconstitutional. So we have official customary law which I can refer uh, for the purposes of this uh, session as formal customary law. And then we have the living customary law. So the official customary law, I'll give you an example um, with uh, one case that you might research on your own. Um, that was the case of uh, primogenitor, primogenitor uh, whereby, um, they used to say, uh, I, I'm sure it still does happen in South Africa right now, where they say only the male child or the firstborn son in the family is the one that inherits. You know, according to the constitution, that was declared unconstitutional because it discriminated on um on 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 women. Uh, it was seen as unfair discrimination on women and other children in the family. So it was declared unconstitutional. So when you're talking about the um, official, the codified or the formal customary law, that's what we are referring to, uh, the customs that they still want to keep, although they infringe on other people's rights. So uh, that primogeniture is no longer... Uh, it's no longer recognized according to our constitution. Uh, therefore, it is now invalid because it uh, conflicts or it, uh, it, it it's a direct conflict to the uh, section nine of our constitution, which is the equality clause uh, that I spoke about earlier. So, um, and we have as well um, what we call um, the living customary law. So the living customary law we will be talking about the customary law that evolves, right? Uh, so when we're talking about uh, the customary law that evolves, we're talking about the laws that change as the times change, right? So let's say um, um, in, in, in some areas, right, um, in, 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 in the villages or in the rural areas, uh, this is just like a wild example, right? Now, nowadays, people will come with the theory of, no, we don't want, um, we don't want to pay lobola, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not selling our daughter and things like that. Th that is um, the evolution, you know, of, of the customary law in uh in our country people want to try things differently and also because the times are changing so in in that manner the law recognizes you know um those things that are happening so they they recognize it and um they they apply that evolution you know to 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 our legal system so that is the living customer law it means that it changes as the time goes on. So that is um, the living customary law. So um, uh, in summary, we have um, the constitution, statutory law, case law, common law, and customary law. And then um, we have international law. International law deals with the treaties, uh, the conventions, uh, like the United Nations. Uh, we have uh, the International Convention on the Rights of Children. Uh, there is a whole chapter, you know, uh, on, on the textbook that deals with the International Convention on the Rights of Children, uh, Child Abduction, and so on. It's, uh, it's a very interesting subject. Uh, if you looking to write something when it is actually very, very interesting. You can uh, read that one on yourself, but we're still going to cover that uh, in future. And then uh, we have religious laws. And then, um, yeah, so w w when we talk about um, 
these are uh, these sources these sources are the ones that are going to uh to help you when you when you have problems so let's say in future you are faced with a problem on a marriage that was conducted under a certain religion let's say for example uh christianity then you will obviously know where to look uh, if it was uh, conducted under Hinduism, then you will know where to look. So those are the sources uh, of family law in South Africa. Uh, just a recap, it's religious laws, international law, uh, customary law, common law, case law, statutory law, and the constitution. And obviously you will do it uh, backwards in the order of the hierarchy. If uh, you get an exam question that says you must um, uh, list the sources of law uh, based on the hierarchy or according to the hierarchy, you obviously know that you will start with the constitution at the top and then legislation and then case and then common and then customary, international, religious, and so on. So um, uh, the FIRAC issue, uh, we will uh, discuss the FIRAC issue just now, uh, I will uh, explain um, uh, how FIRAC works uh, because FIRAC is the one that helps you to summarize uh, to summarize the cases. So uh, do you have uh, any questions uh, before we get to the case that I wanted us to discuss today? Uh, anyone with a question? No question? Okay, uh, so I'll continue. Uh, I am not sure if, um, did you guys, did you guys read the case uh, so that we're possibly on the same page uh, when I'm explaining the case, uh, explaining knowing that you have read the case? Uh, Patrick, Zoom user, did you guys did you guys read the case? Is the case of the Minister of Home Affairs versus Fori, uh, Lesbian and Gay uh, Equality Project versus the Minister of Home Affairs? Uh, Patrick, I see you want to say something. Yes, yes, Mister T, I did uh, read the case, but I didn't finish. It was because it was too long, and I was I was also busy <laughs> with something. <laughs> cases cases are always but I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I think I do have the I do have the knowledge uh, in regard with the content of the case <laughs> okay okay uh can we hear it mm, do, do you want to share or do you want me Mr. to T. yeah no 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 I I, I can share <clears throat> Okay, okay, let's hear it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, because uh, by the time I was um, like reading the case, I, I've noticed that um, indeed the constitution is the supreme uh, law of the country. Yeah. Because um, in the in the in the case of those, uh, I would say like two applicants, it was Mrs. Uh, Mary Madriana for and Mrs. Cecilia. Ne? Yes, yes, you've got it. Which yeah. which which we. Yes, yes, which they wanted to, to get married. Then, yeah. um, uh, because, uh, and it was then, um, I would say it was um, their application to the high court because it was rejected by, by, by the... Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> But it I, was later declared that the, the, it was then declared later by the by the constitutional court that um, that of the, the it was then declared by the constitutional court of South Africa that uh, it was unconstitutional and they should uh, get married. The people of the same sex must get the they, they must be married. They must get married. In yeah, they are constitutional right. Okay, so um, so thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Patrick. So I uh, just to um to give a uh, uh 
I'm gonna call him Ohezumiusa because I, 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 I don't know the name. Uh, I don't know uh, his or her name. So um, let me just uh get to the sections that were that were infringed. Um, okay. So this was the case um of um Miss Marie Adriana Forri and Miss Cecilia Johanna Bontes, if I'm pronouncing that right, they're from Pretoria. And um, the two cases that they had, um, the complainant has been, uh, okay, I'll just read. Their complaint has been that the law excludes them from publicly celebrating their love and commitment to each other in marriage. They contend that the exclusion comes from the common law definition, which states that marriage in South Africa is a union of one man with one woman to the exclusion, while it lasts, of all others, right? Uh, remember when I, um, uh, I don't know if you're here, when I gave, um, oh, energy, energy. Okay, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so I can stop calling you Zoom user. Okay, cool. So the definition, uh, the definition of marriage, you, you will know that, when we uh when when we deal with marriage in its entirety is that the definition of marriage are under the marriage act and that is still the same case even today that's why we have a uh, the civil union act uh that the one that covers that gap so the definition of marriage uh, according to the marriage act it is the union of one man with one woman to the exclusion of all others so this was what um, uh, Miss Forry and uh, Miss Cecilia uh, said that this was um, a discrimination among the gay and lesbians uh, in South Africa because it uh, it was an unfair discrimination because it went against um, the 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 equality clause, uh, which is uh, which is section nine. And then they further stated their case that um, according to the Marriage Act, uh, it also provides that the marriage officers must put to each of the parties when they are, when they are conducting their marriages. Uh, you obviously know that when, when, when the marriage officer is conducting a marriage, they'll be like, I call you here, um, A and B here present to witness that you take uh, C and D as your lawful wife or lawful husband. And that on its own, it's, uh, they said that it's unconstitutional because if you refer to wife or husband, you are directly uh, excluding the same-sex couples. And that was um, their, their, their case there. And then they had tried before uh, to to get married uh, in uh, at home affairs and in court and then the the court was like no this the, this is how the legislation is we cannot change the legislation but you must take it to court and then let the laws be tested so that's why they went to court to make sure that um this uh, unfair discrimination, is deemed uh, invalid. So I have uh, the summary uh, of this case. I will uh, I will share it with you guys. So for the purposes of of uh, of today's session, I wouldn't want to waste your time. We already uh, spent an hour. But um, in, in conclusion, obviously, um, uh, like Patrick said, it was uh, it was found that those uh, particular sections. Uh, in the Marriage Act were uh, unfairly discriminating uh, against the same-sex couples in South Africa, then the court ordered, because the court doesn't make uh, legislation, then the court ordered that um, this legislation be amended to, um, to, 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 to meet, um, not to discriminate, uh, on the on on the same sex couples in South Africa, uh, but instead of instead of amending 
um, the the legislation because the marriage act was never was never amended. Uh, so that is when the civil union act was uh, enacted. That's why I said this is a very important case, and we're going to talk about it now. We're going to be talking about it for the longest time going forward because it's like a cornerstone or the pillar of family law in South Africa, and it changed our, our entire uh, legal system when it comes to when it comes to marriages uh, in South Africa. So it's a very important case. I would urge you to uh, encourage you to uh, download it. Uh, I know you have um, access to LexisNexis and Juta and so on. You can download it. I will share the 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 summary with you so that you can easily um you can easily go through it, uh, and be able to to understand it. But it's very important that you get uh yourself the copy of this um of this case as it is uh the cornerstone you know in um in family law in South Africa. So uh, do you guys have any questions regarding that case? Um. Before I, I, I get on to how to summarize the cases, in fact, we can you, you can you can uh, as a as a um like a homework or something you can you can summarize that case for me. I'll show you how. Okay, no questions. So uh, let's move on uh to how to summarize the case before uh before we um end for today. So, uh, for example, you have that case uh, in front of you, the case of um, uh, Minister of Home Affairs versus Fori Lesbian and Gay Equality Project. Um, so we use uh, something called FIRAC. So uh, le let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about FIRAC. Just forget about IPAC. Let's talk about FIRAC, uh, which is this FIRAC. So FIRAC. Uh, it stands for fact, uh, issue, reasoning, application, and conclusion. Um, but now it's back to being what else is. All right, let's hear what's happening in this uh, live video. Uh, can, I, can I ask you to mute yourself, Enedi? Okay, sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, Okay, um, so FIRAC stands for Facts, Issue, Reasoning, Application, and Conclusion. If you get that, you will never have a problem with reading and summarizing cases because sometimes you will get a case with like a 100-page judgment and you're going to be thinking, how am I going to summarize this? You know, so when you when you're summarizing your case uh, using FIRAC, usually in the exam they will ask you. Um, obviously, you wouldn't have a case. You're not gonna have that case with you. It to, to be a case that you probably read uh, during the course of the study, and then they'll be like, uh, "Tell us what happened on this case." You must use FIRAC uh, for that. So what that means is that you will have your heading on top, and then you're gonna say facts. And then you're going to state the facts of the case. The facts is um what really happened. So when you're talking about the facts, is what really happened on, on, on that particular case. So if it is an issue of like in, in, in this particular case, uh the four is uh they, they wanted to get married, but then when they went to home affairs and then they were turned back. Those are the facts. They went to home affairs trying to get married and they were turned back. That is a fact and that cannot be changed, right? So that gives the, the, the reader an understanding of what really transpired, right? And then you, you list all your facts. Obviously, it's, it's obviously going to be uh, more than one fact, but depending on the mark allocation that you have uh, for that particular question, um, then you can, if it's a two mark question for the fact, or maybe it's a 10 mark, um, one, two, three, four, five. So let's say um, it's a it's a 10 mark question. You can divide that by yourself and be like, okay, F 
for the fact, I'll give you two facts and then my two marks, I'll get them from there. So for the facts, you list all your facts. And then for the I, we said the I stands for the issue. The issue is um, the problem. Why did they go to court? That is the, that's the issue. So in order for, 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 the, for the reader to understand why they went to court, you scan through your case and then you look at the problem. So when we're looking at, at this particular problem, we, we see that, um, we see that um, the, the forays, they, they, they went to court because they, they, they felt that um, the law was discriminating amongst uh, the gay and lesbians in South Africa. So that was their issue because they felt as though those clauses were unconstitutional, the clauses in the Marriage Act, the ones that uh, talk about one man, one woman to the exclusion of all others. It, it's a direct conflict with um, Section 9 of the Constitution, right? So that was the issue that that directly uh, being discriminated. So that is your issue. That's what you list under your issues, right? And then when you go to the reasoning, the reasoning usually goes hand in hand with the decision that is made uh, by the court. Why did they make the decision that they made? So in that particular case, the court made their decision based on the constitution. So they look at the issue. The issue in directly infringed with the rights of uh, gays and lesbians in South Africa uh, when you're looking at section nine of the constitution, uh, which is the equality clause and many others, right? So the court made their reasoning based on what the law says in South Africa, not the legislation that is discriminatory, but the constitution, the supreme law of South Africa, right? So that's how the court made their reasoning. However, in this case, you will see that there is also a lesbian and gay uh, equality project, um, which was amicus curiae, which we call the friends of the court. Uh, we're not going to dwell on that right now, but there were also a very big influence uh, on the decision making because they also came with their effects as to why this uh, this particular clause on the marriage act was discriminatory, right? And then we go to the to the application. After the reasoning, we go to the application. What did the court apply to that particular problem, right? In this case, you will see that the court applied uh, section nine. Uh, of the constitution, which is the equality clause. That is how they, um, they, they, they found out that the, the, this is inconsistent um, with, uh, with um, our constitution. And then when they apply that, they also apply section two, the supremacy clause, that any law that is inconsistent or any law or conduct that is inconsistent with the constitution is invalid. And that particular law uh, on the legislation was inconsistent with the constitution. Therefore, it was invalid. So they applied uh, section two. Uh, if you read the case, you will see that section one was also applied. The values, equality, human rights, and freedoms, it was all uh, applied in that particular case. Section nine, unfair, uh, unfair discrimination based on uh, gender, sex, you know, uh, sexual orientation in this particular case it was it was based on sexual orientation so that was applied so that is the application of um uh, of that particular um on that particular case that's what uh the courts uh applied so uh and then we go to your conclusion the conclusion will be will be the last part. You don't really need to draft a lot of it. Can be when you summarize the case using Farak, it's gonna be like maybe one page or two pages, depending on the mark allocation, right? So when you come to your conclusion, so your conclusion is basically a summary of the entire thing. You don't really need to go through the whole case, you know. 
It's just your summary to say, okay, in this particular case, so and so and so and so happened, and then the court decided on this. And then you can add your own opinion if you like. You know, you're not going to be penalized for that. I mean, obviously, it depends on your lecture, but uh, you can add your own opinion um, with regards to, to the decision that was made. But the conclusion is basically a, a summary of the things that happened just to uh, give the person, uh, your reader, an overview of the of the entire case because in law, uh, the person that's reading, they have to know, you don't keep them in suspense. And in conclusion, obviously, they have to like get some like a round up of um, everything that happened. So I have, um, we have come to the end of this session. I know it was uh, pretty quick. Oh, okay. It's been an hour already. Okay. Not too quick. So uh, do you guys have any questions before um, before we close? <laughs> no questions? Okay. I will take it as if uh, I did everything right or everything wrong, because if there is no questions, then I get consent. Or should I ask questions? <laughs> I think, I think, I think I should, I think I should ask questions. Um, so um, I'm not gonna pick on anybody because it's just uh, the two of you today. So uh, the sources of law, who, who wants to tell me about the sources of law that we have in South Africa? Of family law, actually, sorry, let me not say sources of law because then we'll be going broad. Uh, let's talk about the sources of family law in South Africa. Who wants to give it a try? Uh, Enedi, you wanna give it a try? Is it? Is it is that a constitution? Yes, go ahead. You are right. Constitution and just want to see if I can remember. Legislate, legislate as well. Yeah, legislation. Yeah. Legislation. Um. Uh, that's, yeah, that's 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 what I can remember from. That's what you can remember. Um, okay, no, yeah. that, that's perfectly yeah. fine. Um, Patrick, do you want to help her? Yes, yes, Mr. T, I can try. Yes, please, I love trying. Yes, we also talked about the case law. Mm -hmm. Yes, which you refer to as a as a judicial president. Yes, the previous court judgments, yeah. yeah. The previous court judgments. And we also talked about the customary law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, or should I also add those, the international law and those ones? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. They are, they are the sources of family law in South Africa, you know. Uh, yeah, you can add those as well. Uh, international law, um, common law. Uh, customary yes. law, um, you know, yeah. So, so those are the the sources of law. So, in 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 the order of their hierarchy, it's the constitution, statutory law, case law, common law, customary law, international law, and religious law, right? And then, um, one more question. Uh, what does uh, family law, wh where does it fit in our legal system? I'll just give you a hint uh, because you might not have been here. Is it under public law or private law? Anyone? Take a guess. Take a guess. It's two options. Private law or public law. Uh, Mr. T, I will go with the, the public law. Okay. Uh, it's private law. So I, I think you might have missed uh, that part. I can I can just do 
a recap um yes. if you're not uh rushing anyway so let me no, start uh, let me start from the uh from the definition let's start from the definition uh, those are the outcomes uh, I, I can give you guys this uh this slide as well um you can just uh send me a message on whatsapp right and then i'll share with you both energy and uh patrick uh these slides and then you can also use them to um to study so uh okay so family law we say uh, family law is concerned with the law and rules relating to families in south africa so it deals with um family matters right and the definition is that it regulates the origin, the contents, and the dissolution of legal relationships between spouses, life partners, domestic partnerships, parents, and children. So that is the textbook definition. You can obviously um, try and summarize it, break it down to your own. You know, that's uh, how you can you can understand it. So like the dissolution of legal relationships is like it's like uh divorce, you know, it's like it's like uh when the relationships end between spouses and uh life partners and domestic uh partnerships. And then when it comes to family and children, uh it usually deals with the cases of maybe when the parents are getting divorced, who wants to live with the child. Uh, somebody wants to take the child and the other one wants to take the child. And then obviously there's certain requirements that the courts look at to say, okay, this one's going to be staying with the child and then we're going to create the visitation rights and so on and so on and so on. So we will deal with that in future. So the definition is that it regulates the origin, contents, dissolution of uh, all legal relationships between spouses, life partners, domestic partners, parents, and children. So, and then we also spoke about uh, where uh, family law fits into our legal system. Uh, so we said family law, uh, it, it, it falls under private law because it deals with private individuals. It deals with families, right? Um, and then public law is the one that deals with the state and, and the people, uh, constitutional law, criminal law, that is that is public law. But fam uh, family law falls under private law, which um, private law you will find like your, your, your law of persons, uh, you will find uh, family law, uh, you will find your law of delicts, law of contract, law of property, and so on. All those are private law. So um, for the purposes of this session, family law falls under private law. And private law, deals with um with the relationships between individuals amongst uh uh any other areas of law as well such as delict contract property persons and family so that's very important also to know you're probably going to do that in introduction to law or you would have already done it in introduction to law because uh it's actually one of the first things i think that they teach you uh, that uh, this is private law, it deals with this and this and this. This is public law, it deals with this and this and this. And then if you look at the context of private law, like law of delict, it's one of the modules that you're still going to do if you've not done that already. Law of contract, you're still going to do that as a module. Property law, law of persons, you know, is the modules that will be dealt with um, separately. Uh, and all those fall under private law. Uh, so are we happy? Yes, we are, Mr. T. Okay, thank you. And questions? No questions. Okay, cool. So uh, I will say uh, this is where our session will end today. Um, so if you need the slides, you can um, you can send me the uh, you can send me a message on WhatsApp and then I will share the slides with you. And um, I hope that you guys are also subscribed to the uh, to the YouTube channel uh, so that you can see like in case like in case of today, 
uh, everybody else is not here. They are busy partying somewhere else. So if uh, one day it happens that you are not here, you missed a session, you can always go um, to the YouTube channel and um, and watch the sessions uh, that you missed. And I truly hope that this session was very meaningful and helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any feedback or any concerns, you are very much welcome to tell me what to, uh, look, Mr. T, uh, there's something that we didn't understand or we really love your session that helps me, you know, uh, regain my, my confidence in the times where I, I, I feel low. I, I really appreciate uh, any kind of feedback. And thank you. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no problem, yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm new. I'm actually this is my 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 first year studying law. Oh, nice! Welcome. So this this is, this is new to me. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to find out when 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 you're doing research research maybe for assignments or yes. What's the um, maybe um like a, a safe um a safe site where you can where you can do research okay cool or, or uh, have to answer so, maybe according yeah. to the oh. textbook or when where, where are you studying yes, sorry. um stadio at stadio okay so yeah. if you if you are at stadio is that where you're studying patrick yes mr t okay so okay so stadio has um like any other university, they give you access to LexisNexis and they give you access to Juta. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you have access to LexisNexis and you have access to Juta. And when you access it uh, through the portals from study, I, I'm not too sure if, I think you find it under Canvas or under their, um, their library link, right? and then you will be able to access it for free. Please do not use Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's a no-go, even if it's Google Scholar uh, for, for, for yeah. cases and research, please do not use it. Uh, please do not mm -hmm. use Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia, it's a no, 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 no. You must never even go there, okay? Because it's an okay. open source. Anyone can edit it. But you, you need to use LexisNexis you need to use Juta. There, there is a lot of places that they give you um in your in, in your portal. I'm not too sure how, how it looks like right okay, now. I'll, I'll check. Yeah. I'll, I will but check. if yeah, if you can if you can't find it, you can let me know because I still have an active um active canvas for for, for study. I can check and see at uh, the library, but I think it's it's on canvas. So that is your safe place to go. Okay, so if, if you can't find mm. it uh, or if you have any problems finding it, please speak to somebody to help you uh, gain access to LexisNexis. It is very important that you have access to, to, to those sites. Okay. Yeah. All right, so right, thank you. Not a problem. You are very much welcome. Um, do you have any other question, NAD? No? No, thank you. I'm, okay. I'm okay, thank you. Okay, Patrick? No, I don't have any question, Mr. T. Okay, uh, not a problem, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining. I will communicate with you uh, from, the, from the WhatsApp group as to what we're going to do next. But what I, I will recommend as well is that you can uh, also send me questions. Let's say... Um, I'm not too sure what modules you are doing. Uh, <laughs> please don't say anything, Patrick, because I know that you told me last time. Um, so you can always send me questions and be like, hey, uh, on the next session of family law, would you please touch on A, B, and C? And then I'll make sure that I'll include it uh, within my preparation. Otherwise, I'll be going wild according to my own planning 
And sometimes you'll find that it's not beneficial to you or it does not align with your study guide. So it's very important that you read your study guide, you read your textbook. And um, if you feel like uh, there's certain areas that you didn't understand while you're doing the preparation, you must let me know so that when we come for the session, we are all ready and then I'll be able to answer all your questions. Uh, so for tonight, we're going to leave it here. Uh, Energy and Patrick, I really appreciate your attendance. And I do hope that um, this session was beneficial to you and that if you have any questions, you can always refer to it on YouTube or you can always uh, WhatsApp me. I will be happy to help uh, in any way going forward. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, you must have a lovely one as well. Um, a quick one, sorry. Uh, when is the no uh, next session? Uh, I will let you guys know uh, because okay. I'm a bit busy this weekend, but I will let you guys know uh, possibly on Sunday. And sometimes what I will do is that I can just uh, record like a session. Uh, even if I did it at night, I'll always post the link. You can join if you have insomnia like me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I will let you guys know on Sunday. All right. Okay, cool. No worries. Thank you. Not a, a problem. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Uh, goodbye, Nnedi. Bye, Patrick. Uh -huh.